when I was young and starting out uh, as an actor on the Broadway stage, at that time, if you had made any sort of impression at all, really, on the stage, you got a screen test. It was almost automatic. The big studios had huge stables of actors who they put under contract and developed uh, or hoped to develop. Um, and uh, in the theater, going out to Hollywood in those days was always considered something of a sellout. And um, I, I, I did three farces for George Abbott, all of which were big hits. Three Men on a Horse, Room Service, and Boy Meets Girl. And I was offered screen test after screen test, and I always said, no, thank you. No, I'm, I'm going to stay in the theater. I don't want to go out to Hollywood. And then eventually, somebody at Paramount uh, called to me and said, Mr. Cronin, what will it take to get you to do a screen test? And I said, well, I had all the gall in the world. I said, I, first of all, I won't play less than four roles. I thought the business of being cast a type would um, and they said, I see, and what else? And I said, and I'm only available to make films from May to September. Mm -hmm. And what else? And I don't remember what else it was. And by golly, they made a test. They built four sets. Uh, oh, yes, that somewhere along the line, they said, these four things you want to do Will it be all right if, if we choose two of them? And I knew what they would choose because I didn't know specifically, but I knew with Three Men and Horace Room Service and Boy Meets Girl, I was considered a young and rising farceur. Uh, and I knew they'd give me farces, and indeed they did. And then I chose two things that <laughs> were a long way away from that. I chose a scene from The Last Mile which Spencer Tracy had done on the stage, and which was very dramatic. Um, and then I s took a scene from some very unlikely piece of work, a play by Andre Obe called Noah, in which there's a scene where Noah talks to the Lord about building the ark. And it's a funny, high comedy scene. And. Um, I did those four scenes, and they said, thank you, and they shipped them out to California, and word came back, fine, we can use him, <coughs> put him under contract, standard, so much per week, renewable every year, 40 weeks a year, renewable every year for seven years. And uh, <coughs> they called me in and said, congratulations, you got this job, You're being very well paid, and, and uh, this is the deal. And I said, Wait a minute. What, what, what about May to September? I, 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 my life's in the theater, and I don't want it to change. Hume, by this time we were on a first name basis. Not even the biggest star gets that kind of deal. And you're not a big star, you're a character actor. And we cannot arrange the schedule of making a film which costs hundreds of thousands perhaps millions of dollars, different times from now, uh, <coughs> at your convenience or when you, when you want to work. Um, and I said, oh, well, goodbye then. And I, I walked away from it. Um, <coughs> but the test stayed out in the files of Paramount for four or five years until I heard from it again. And that was when I suddenly got a call from an agent saying, Alfred Hitchcock wants to see you. And I went out to California and um, <clears throat> it was 1942 and um, I must have read the script. No, I hadn't read the script. No, I hadn't read the script. 
when I sat in the large waiting room out at Universal, which is where the film was being made. And a man came through. It was quite crowded. He spotted me and came over. He said, uh, Mr. Cronin? I said, yes, sir. He said, oh, I'm so sorry. We brought you here under false pretenses. You're far too young. But you're here. You better meet Mr. Hitchcock. <clears throat> so I went in to see the great man. And he, at that time, he weighed about 300 pounds. Uh, he's at his highest weight. And he sat with his thumbs up like that and over. And he looked a bit like Buddha. And um, he said, um, have you ever been in Sonoma County? I said, no, sir. He said, well, it's Northern California, and it's at the heart of the, the uh, wine growing, uh, the, the vineyards, the, the, the wine grapes. I said, yes, sir. He said, and when we finished the day's shooting, he said, we will wander out in the vineyards and we will seize the bunches of grapes and squeeze the juice down our throats. And with all the gall in the world, I said, excuse me, sir, but it sounds more of a part for you than for me. And he said, what? Oh, y y you mean um, Bacchus? Uh, and I said, yes, sir. He said, oh, well, you see, I've never believed in typecasting. And then he went on and he said, um, he never said anything about my age. And the man who had spoken to me out in the outer office was the producer, a man named Jack Skirball. Uh, he, he finally, he said, now what are you going to do? Are you going to stay here in California until we start shooting? Or are you going back to New York first? And I thought, he expects me to work on the film. I, I guess I've got a job. And that, that was the way I got my first job.